Okay. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, The Screenplay Pattern, Better Interactions for Better Automation with Andrew Knight. Andrew is the automation panda. By day, he builds solutions to testing problems as Precision Lender's lead software engineer in test. Outside the office, he frequently writes, speaks, and blogs about testing. And he also leads development on BOA Constrictor, the .NET screenplay program pattern. So without any further ado, I will now turn this over to Andy. Thanks, Patrice. And hello, everyone. Thanks for attending my webinar. I personally like to thank Apply Tools, Andy, Angie Jones, and Patrice Johnson for inviting me to speak here today. My name is Andrew Knight, or Pandy for short. I'm the Automation Panda. I build solutions to testing problems. I'm also the lead developer for Boa Constrictor, the .NET screenplay pattern. Today, I'm going to introduce you to the screenplay pattern as a new way to automate interactions. The screenplay pattern isn't exactly new. It's been around for a number of years, but it is still new to a lot of folks in our industry. I strongly believe that the screenplay pattern is a much better way to interact with web pages than the page object model. In this talk, I'll back up that claim in three parts. First, I'll cover problems with traditional ways of automating interactions. Second, I'll explain why the screenplay pattern is a better way. And third, I'll show how to use the screenplay pattern with a C-sharp library named BOA Constrictor. So to start, let's define that big I word I keep tossing around, interactions. Simply put, interactions are how users operate software. For this talk, I'll focus on web UI interactions, like clicking buttons and scraping text. Interactions are indispensable to testing. The simplest way to define testing is interaction plus verification. That's it. You do something and you make sure it works. Think about any functional test case that you've ever written or executed. The test case was a step-by-step -step procedure in which each step had interactions and verifications. Here's an example of a simple DuckDuckGo search test. DuckDuckGo is a search engine like Google or Yahoo. The steps here are fairly straightforward. Opening the search engine requires navigation. Searching for a phrase requires entering keystrokes and clicking the search button. Verifying results requires scraping the page title and results links from the new page. Interactions are everywhere. Unfortunately, our industry struggles to handle automated web UI interactions well. Even though most teams use Selenium WebDriver and their test automation code, Every team seems to use it differently. There's lots of duplicate code and flakiness too. Let's take a look at the way many teams evolve their web driver based interactions. I'll use C-sharp for code examples, and I'll continue to use DuckDuckGo for testing. When teams first start writing test automation code using Selenium WebDriver, they frequently write raw calls. Anyone familiar with the WebDriver API should recognize these calls even if they don't use C-sharp themselves. The WebDriver object is initialized using, let's say, Chrome Driver or the Chrome browser. The first step to open the search engine calls driver.navigate.gotoURL with the DuckDuckGo web address. The second step performs the search by fetching web elements using driver.findElements with locators, and then calling methods like send keys and click. The third step uses assertions to verify the contents of the page title and the existence of result links. Finally, at the end of the test, hopefully, the web driver quits the browser for cleanup. Like I said, these are all common web driver calls. Unfortunately, there is a big problem in this code. Race conditions. There are three race conditions in this code in which the automation does not wait for the page to be ready before making interactions. 
Bum, bum, bum. WebDriver doesn't automatically wait for elements to load or for titles to appear. Waiting is a huge challenge for web UI automation. And it is one of the reasons, or one of the main reasons for quote unquote flaky tests. You could set an implicit wait that will make calls wait until target elements appear. They don't work for all cases, such as the title in race condition number two. Explicit weights provide much more control over waiting timeout and conditions. They use a web driver wait object with a preset timeout value, and they must be placed explicitly throughout the code. Here, they are placed in the three spots where race conditions could happen. Each wait.until call takes a function that returns true when the condition is satisfied. These weights are necessary, but they cause new problems. First, they cause duplicate code because web, drive, or because web element locators are used multiple times. Notice how search form input homepage is called twice. Second, raw calls with explicit weights make code less intuitive. If I remove the comments from each paragraph of code, what's left is a bit of a wall of text. It's difficult to understand what this code does at a glance. Surrounding these problems, most teams use the page object pattern, also called the page object model. In the page object pattern, each page is modeled as a class with locator variables and interaction methods. So a search page could look like this. At the top, there could be a constant for the page URL and variables for the search input and search button locators. Notice how each has an intuitive name. Next, there could be a variable to hold the WebDriver reference. This reference would come via dependency injection through the constructor. The first method would be a load method that navigates the browser to the page's URL. And the second method would be a search method that waits for the elements to appear, enters the phrase into the input field, and clicks the search button. This page object class has a decent structure and a mild separation of concerns. Locators and interactions have meaningful names. Page objects require a few more lines than raw calls at first, but their parts can easily be reused. The original test steps can be rewritten using this new search page class. Notice how much cleaner this new code looks. The other steps can be rewritten using page objects as well. Unfortunately though, page objects themselves suffer problems with duplication in their interaction methods. Suppose a page object needs a method to click an element. We already know the logic. Wait for the element to exist and then click it. But what about clicking another element? The method here on the screen is essentially hard coded for only one button. A second click method is needed to click the other button. Unfortunately, as you notice, the code for both methods is the same. The code will also be the same for any other click method. This is copy pasta, and it happens all the time in page objects. I've personally seen page objects grow to be thousands of lines long due to duplicative methods like this. At this point, some teams will say, Aha, more duplicate code? We can solve that problem with more object-oriented programming. And they'll create the infamous base page, a parent class for all other page object classes. The base page will have variables for the web driver and the wait object. It will also provide common interaction methods, such as this click method that can click on any element. Abstraction for the win, right? Child pages will inherit everything from the base page. Child page interaction methods frequently just call these page methods. I've seen many teams stop here and say, blah, 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 this is good enough. Unfortunately, in my opinion, this really isn't all that great. 
The base page helps mitigate code duplication, but it doesn't solve its root cause. Page objects inherently combine two separate concerns, page structure and interaction. Interactions are often generic enough to be used on any web element. Coupling interaction code with specific locators or pages forces testers to add new page object methods for every type of interaction needed for an element. Every element could potentially need to be clicked, need to scrape text, need to check if it's displayed, or any other type of web driver interaction. That's a lot of extra code that shouldn't be necessary. The base page also becomes very top heavy as testers add more and more code to share. Most frustratingly, the page object code I showed here is merely one type of implementation. What do your page objects look like? I'd bet dollars to donuts that they look different than mine. Page objects are completely freeform. Every team implements them differently. There's no quote unquote official version of the page object pattern. There's no conformity in its design. Even worse, within its design, there's almost no way for the pattern to enforce good practices. That's why people argue over things like whether locators should be public or private. Page objects would be better described as a convention rather than as a true design pattern. There must be a better way to handle interactions. Thankfully, I think there is. Let's take a closer look at how interactions happen. First, there is someone who initiates interactions. Usually, this is a user. They are the ones making the clicks, taking the scrapes, all those kinds of things. Let's call them the active. Second, there is the product under test. For our examples in this talk, that's a web app. It has pages with elements. Web page structure is modeled using locators to access page elements from the DOM. Keep in mind, the thing under test could also be anything else, like a microservice, a mobile app, or even a command line. Third, there are the interactions themselves. For web apps, they could be simple clicks and keystrokes, or they could be more complex interactions, like logging into the app or searching for a phrase. Each interaction will do the same type of operation on whatever target page or element it's given. Finally, there are objects that enable actors to perform certain types of interactions. For example, browser interactions need a tool like Selenium WebDriver to make clicks and scrapes. Let's call these things abilities. Actors, abilities, and interactions are each different types of concerns. We could summarize the relationship in one line. Actors use abilities to perform interactions. Actors use abilities to perform interactions. This is the heart of the screenplay pattern. In the page object convention, page objects become messy because all concerns are all combined. The screenplay pattern separates concerns from maximal reusability and scalability. So let's learn how to screenplay using BOA Constrictor. BOA Constrictor is an open source C-sharp implementation of the screenplay pattern that my team and I developed at Precision Lender. It is the cornerstone of PL's end-to-end -end test automation solution. It can be used with any .NET test framework, like SpecFlow or NUnit. The project has a rich doc site hosted using GitHub Pages. The GitHub repository is q2ebank.boa constrictor constrictor. Let's rewrite that DuckDuckGo search test from before, but this time using BOA constrictor. <clears throat> to use BOA Constrictor, you will need to install the BOA Constrictor, REST Sharp, and Selenium WebDriver NuGet packages. My example code will also use Fluent Assertions and Chrome Driver. Let's start with the actor. 
the actor is the entity that initiates interactions. All screenplay calls start with an actor. Most test cases need only one actor. The actor class optionally takes two arguments. The first argument is a name, which can help describe who the actor is. The name will appear in logged messages. The second argument is a logger, <coughs> which will send log messages from screenplay calls to a target destination. Loggers must implement BOA Constrictor's iLogger interface. Console Logger is a class that will log messages to the system console. You can define your own custom loggers by implementing iLogger. Abilities enable actors to initiate interactions. For example, an actor needs a Selenium WebDriver instance to click elements on a web page. Read this new line in plain English. The actor can browse the web with a new Chrome driver. Bow Constructor's fluent-like syntax makes its call chains very readable. Actor.can adds an ability to an actor. Browse the web is an ability that enables actors to perform web UI interactions. Browse the web.with provides the web driver object that the actor will use, which in this case is a new Chrome driver. Boa Constrictor supports all browser types. All abilities must implement the iAbility interface. Actors can be given Actors can be given any number of abilities. Browse the web simply holds a reference to the web driver object. Web UI interactions will retrieve this web driver object from the actor. Before the actor can call any web driver based interactions, the web pages under test need models. These models should be static classes that include locators for elements on the page and possibly page URLs. Page classes should only model structure. They should not include any interaction logic. The screenplay pattern separates the concerns of page structure from interactions. That way, interactions can target any element, maximizing code reusability. Interactions like clicks and scrapes work the same regardless of the target elements. The search page here has two members. The first member is a URL named URL, and the second member is a locator for the search input element named search input. Again, intuitive names. A locator has two parts. First, it has a plain language description that will be used for logging. And second, it has a query that is used to define the element on the page. Boa Constrictor uses Selenium WebDriver's by queries. For convenience, locators can be, can be constructed using the statically imported L method. <clears throat> the screenplay pattern has two types of interactions. The first type of interaction is called a task. A task performs actions without returning a value. Examples of tasks include clicking an element, refreshing the browser, and loading a page. These interactions all do something rather than get something. Boa Constrictor provides a task named Navigate for loading a web page using a target URL. Read this line in plain English. The actor attempts to navigate to the URL for the search page. Again, Boa Constrictor's fluent-like syntax is very readable. Clearly, this line will load the DuckDuckGo search page. Actor dot attempts to calls a task. All tasks must implement the iTask interface. When the actor calls attempts to on a task, it calls the tasks perform as method. Navigate is the name of the task and dot URL provides the target URL. The navigate tasks perform as method fetches the web driver object from the actor's ability and uses it to load the given URL. 
search page.url comes from the search page class we previously wrote. Putting the URL in the page class makes it universally available. So that was a task. Let's look at the second type of uh, screenplay interaction. Second type of interaction is called a question. A question returns an answer after performing actions. Examples of questions include getting an element's text, location, and appearance. Each of these interactions returns some sort of value. Bow Constrictor provides a question named value attribute out of the box that gets the quote unquote value of the text currently inside an input field. Read this line in plain English. The actor asking for the value attribute of the search page's search input element should be empty. Actor.AskingFor calls a question. All questions must implement the iQuestion interface. When the actor calls asking for or the equivalent asks for method, it calls the questions request as method. <clears throat> value attribute is the name of the question and dot of provides the target web elements locator. The request as method fetches the web driver object waits for the target element to exist on the page, and scrapes and returns its value attributes. Search page .search input is the locator from the search input field. It comes from the search page class. Finally, once the value is obtained, the test must make an assertion on it. Should be empty is a fluent assertion that verifies that the search input field is empty when the page is first loaded. Test case's next step is to enter a search phrase. Doing this requires two interactions, typing the phrase into the search input and clicking the search button. However, since searching is such a common operation, we can create a custom interaction for search by composing the lower level interactions together. The search .go task takes a search phrase. Its perform as method calls two other interactions, send keys and click, which we saw before. Using one task to combine these lower level interactions makes the test code more readable and understandable. It also provides automation reusability. Read this line in plain English. The actor attempts to search DuckDuckGo for Panda. That's concise and intuitive. The last test case step should verify that the result links appear after entering a search phrase. Unfortunately, this step has a race condition. <clears throat> Pardon me. The result page takes a few seconds to display result links. Automation must wait for those links to appear. Checking too early will make the test case fail. Bow Constrictor tries to make waiting easy. Read this line in plain English. The actor waits until the appearance of the result page links is equal to true. In simpler time, terms, wait until the result links appear. Waits until is a special method. It will repeatedly call a question until the answer meets a given condition. For this step, the question is the appearance of the result links on the result page. Before links are loaded, the question will return false. Once links appear, it will return true. The condition for waiting for the answer is for the value to become true. Boa Constrictor provides several conditions out of the box, such as equality, mathematical comparisons, and string matching. You can also implement custom conditions by implementing the I condition interface. Waiting is smart. It will repeatedly ask the question until the answer is met, and then it will move on. This makes waiting much more efficient than hard sleeves. 
If the answer does not meet the condition within the timeout, then the wait will raise an exception. The default timeout is 30 seconds, but it can be overridden. Many of BOA Constrictor's web driver based interactions already handle waiting. Anything that uses a target element, such as click, send keys, or text, will wait for the element to exist before attempting the operation. We saw this in some previous example code. However, there are times where explicit weights are needed. Interactions that query appearance or existence do not automatically wait. The final step is to quit the browser. Boa Constrictor's Quit Web Driver task does this for you. If you don't quit the browser, then it will remain open and possibly turn into a zombie. Always quit the browser. Furthermore, in whatever test framework you use, put the step to quit the browser in a cleanup or teardown routine so that it, it is called even when the test fails. And there we have our completed test using BOA Constrictor screenplay pattern. All the separated concerns come together beautifully to handle interactions in a much better way. The screenplay pattern can be used for more than web UI interactions. BOA Constrictor has interactions for REST APIs using REST Sharp too. Let's quickly step through a REST API test. The actor is the same as before. To call REST APIs, the actor needs an ability called call REST API. It uses a REST Sharp REST client with a base URL. For this test, we will use a public API called dog API, which returns random pictures of dogs. One actor can have multiple abilities, as long as each ability has a different type. BOA Constrictor uses REST Sharp's request object directly, which specify resource path and HTTP method. To call the REST API, BOA Constrictor uses this call. The actor calls the REST request using the given request object. We can then check the response object for response code and other data. This test is quite basic, but BOA Constrictor can do some advanced tricks like downloading files, automatically dumping responses, and automatically deserializing response bodies. REST API interactions may also be composed with web UI interactions. As we said before, the screenplay pattern can be summed up in one line. Actors use abilities to perform interactions. It's that simple. Actors use abilities to perform interactions. For those who like object-oriented programming, the screenplay pattern is, in a sense, a solid refactoring of the page object convention. Solid refers to five design principles for maintainability and extensibility. I won't go into detail about each principle here because the information is a bit dense. But if you're interested, then snap a quick screenshot check out all these principles later. Wikipedia is a good source. You'll find that the screenplay pattern follows each one nicely. So why should you use screenplay pattern over page object convention or raw web driver calls? There are a few key reasons. First, the screenplay pattern, and specifically the BOA Constrictor project, provide rich, reusable, reliable interactions out of the box. BOA Constrictor already has tasks and questions for every type of web driver based interaction. Each one is battle hardened and safe. Second, screenplay interactions are composable. Like we saw with searching for a phrase, you can easily combine interactions. This makes code easier to use and reuse and it avoids lots of duplication. Third, the screenplay pattern makes waiting easy using existing questions and conditions. Waiting is one of the toughest parts of black box automation. Fourth, screenplay calls are readable and understandable. 
They use fluent like syntax that reads more like prose than code. And finally, the screenplay pattern at its core is a design pattern for any type of interaction. In this talk, I showed how to use it for web UI and REST API, but you could also use screenplay for other things. You can also make your own interactions. Overall, the screenplay pattern provides better interactions for better automation. That's the point. It's not just another Selenium WebDriver wrapper. It's not just a new spin on page objects. Screenplay is a great way to exercise any features under test. And as we saw before, the screenplay pattern isn't that complicated. Actors use abilities to perform interactions. That's it. The programming behind it just has some nifty dependency injection. Oops. If you'd like to start using the screenplay pattern for your test automation, there are a few ways you can get started. If you're programming in C-sharp, you can use Boa Constrictor, the library I showed in these examples. If you're programming in Java or JavaScript, then you can use Serenity BDD, a mature, complete test automation framework that includes the screenplay pattern. Serenity BDD greatly influenced Boa Constrictor, but please note that the two are entirely separate projects. Boa Constrictor is not Serenity BDD for .NET. Instead, Boa Constrictor aims to be a simpler, standalone implementation just of the screenplay pattern. If you're programming in Python, then hold on to your seats. Python is personally my favorite programming language, and I think it's one of the best languages for test automation. I'm currently developing a screenplay implementation in Python in my spare time. It will be similar to Boa Constrictor, but the code will be even simpler because it's Python. If none of these options suit you, then you could create your own. The screenplay pattern does require a bit of boilerplate code, but it's worthwhile in the end. You can always reference code from Boa Constrictor and Serenity BDD because those projects are open source. If you want to learn more about Boa Constrictor specifically, please visit the doc site. It provides a thorough information about projects and the screenplay pattern. I recommend taking the hands-on tutorial so you can develop a test automation project yourself with Boa Constrictor. It covers both web UI and REST API interactions. Also, since Boa Constrictor is an open source project, I'd love for you to contribute. If you want to see how to refactor an existing test automation project using Boa Constrictor screenplay pattern, check out this live stream I recently did with Sabotage Andy, community manager of Specflow. We refactored all the page objects in an existing project into screenplay calls. The amount of code reduced drastically. Even though Sabotage Andy was new to Boa Constrictor, he was able to figure things out pretty easily. So with that, I want to say thank you so much for taking the time to learn more about the screenplay pattern and Boa Constrictor today. Be sure to check out our GitHub repo and our doc site. I have one more thing to share. We recently printed a bunch of really cool Boa Constrictor stickers. There are two inch vinyl medallions in black and white. I love them and so do my team and we want to share them. So if you would like to receive one, tweet something that you learned from today's webinar. Tag me at Automation Panda and include the hashtag Boa Constrictor. And after this webinar, I'll mail stickers to 10 people who tweeted and I'll mail them anywhere in the world. If your tweet was chosen, I'll send you a direct message via Twitter to figure out shipping information. So thanks again to Apple Tools for hosting this webinar. And I'm now ready to answer some questions. Fantastic. Thank you, Andy. Um, we are going to keep our cameras turned off right now to just make sure that we were having a little bit of lag with the video earlier. So we're going to keep them off, but oh, we are no. going to go ahead and yeah, it, it was, it's okay though. We um, still okay. definitely have some great questions that came in and we're going to go ahead and um, get started with those. Uh, if you have any questions for Andrew that you have not posted in the questions panel, please go ahead and do so. We will try to get to as many as possible. So let's jump in. The first question that we have, um, what are the disadvantages of screenplay pattern? For sure, they, this person is thinking for sure that it has to have some type of disadvantage. Of course, of course. Um, 
I would say the main disadvantages of screenplay pattern are that, first of all, you do need a lot of boilerplate code to get started. Um, if, like, a, like, if you don't have a project readily available like BOA Constrictor or like screenplay, you'd have to implement the pattern yourself. And that's a challenge I took on about three years ago when I was first starting at Precision Lender. And um, I knew because of the scale that the project would become, it would be worth it. Um, and at the time, I didn't find any decent screenplay implementations that I liked in C Sharp and .NET. Um, but yeah, it, it took a while to learn the pattern myself, put all the different interfaces in place, start making all those Selenium WebDriver interactions. Um, so it, like I said, if you don't have a project like BOA Constrictor ready to go, you will have to write a lot of boilerplate code to get started. That's what I would think would probably be the main disadvantage. Um, another one is there is a bit more of a learning curve to screenplay over, um, let's say, page object convention. Page objects, you can just like, you know, blast them out and go, right? <laughs> there, there's no like official structure you have to conform to. You just kind of follow conventions and go along. Um, I would liken it to if, if page objects are like driving a car with an automatic transmission, screenplay is a little bit more at first like driving manual. You know, you got to figure out the stick shift and the clutch. Um, but once you once you get the hang of it, it's it's like second nature. And I would say it even goes better. <laughs> you know, um, so those two would be the main things I'd say are the disadvantages of screenplay. Okay. And let's see. Are there plans to allow BOA Constructor to work where WebDriver is not applicable, specifically Playwright? Are there plans? I, I wouldn't say I have plans. I would say I have dreams. <laughs> um, I have I have strong, uh, recently, fr uh, wow, English fail, my bad. I believe Playwright is releasing a, a C-sharp version fairly soon, if, if not already. Um, I would love to try Playwright with BOA Constructor. Um, I don't know if I will personally have time to do that, but hey, we are open source. So if you want to contribute, I'd be more than happy to partner with you. Um, there, there's no reason why it couldn't, right? Um, we could easily write a bunch of Playwright-based interactions, um, just like we have the Selenium WebDriver ones. And I've heard that Playwright has about a, or is about a third faster than, than Selenium WebDriver. So it could be pretty cool to see what we could do. Next question. iActor, iAbility, what is the name of the library? And secondly, is there are there reference libraries for Java, Python, Ruby, etc.? Okay, so excuse me. Within BOA Constrictor, we are, our interfaces for the screenplay pattern all follow .NET C Sharp, Microsoft coding kinds of standards. So there is an actor and an iActor. The I means interface, without the I means the concrete class with the actual parts in it. Um, and also, if, if you're not familiar with C Sharp, but you are familiar with Java, they're very, very similar. Uh, just, you know, a little bit of like dialectical changes, so to speak. So we have an I actor interface. We have an I ability interface that is the parent interface of all kinds of abilities. It doesn't really have any members, so to speak. It just kind of gives it a type. You've got I task for tasks. I question for questions, um, and you have I condition for those wait conditions. Um, all of that is within um, the BOA constrictor package, part of the BOA constrictor namespace. It's either BOA constrictor or BOA constrictor core. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, <clears throat> the second part is there are there reference libraries for Java, Python, Ruby? Um, no. Uh, BOA constrictor right now is exclusively in C sharp. It was heavily influenced by Serenity BDD, which has Java and JavaScript implementations. And uh, if you look at my GitHub account, you can see I've been futzing around with Python screenplay, just kind of making my own thing that would be similar to Boa Constrictor. Okay. What if asking for is more complex and assertions is related with soft assertions? Comparing files like XML, PDF, JSON files in the end of the Selenium test. Okay. Um, so what if asking for is more complex? Um, I'm not exactly sure what the, the question is asking, but I can take a stab at it. 
So when, when we have asking for, asking for asks a question. A question is an interaction that gives you some sort of value. So your, your basic bare bones kind of asking for things would be things like asking for the text of some elements or asking if a certain element exists in the page or appears on the page. Um, you, can, you can also make your own custom questions that kind of build up something bigger. So an example of that, like within my tests at Precision Lender would be something like, you know, actor asks for, um, you know, a particular, the title of a particular page or asks for um, like a, a text list of all of the elements in a table or something. Um, so assertions related with soft assertions, you can do that. Um, we, Boa Constrictor itself does not have a soft assertion mechanism. Um, assertions and interactions are two separate concerns. Um, so we actually, I've actually implemented my own kind of internal soft assertion mechanism um, for, for my precision lender tests. And so we can, in, what we can do is we can kind of stack up multiple asking for calls with fluent assertions tacked on them and then have that be try, let's say all three calls. And then if one of them blows up, wait till the end and then blow up. Um, and then uh, comparing files like XML, PDF, JSON. Again, um, that, that falls into like doing multiple assertions and stuff. You, you can do that. Um, Boa Constrictor does not directly handle the concern of assertions. That's why we use the Fluent Assertions Library, which is a very popular .NET one, um, just kind of like a, as an integration. But you can, you can, yeah, you can use interactions because every question call is essentially going to return a value, which means it's essentially just an expression. So you can use that expression in any way that you would like. Okay. Can we use other REST API clients besides REST Sharp? Great question. So right now, Boa Constrictor only supports REST Sharp. Why? Because that's just what we've done at Precision Lender. Um, please keep in mind, Boa Constrictor is a fairly small project right now. Um, we first released it back in October of 2020, um, and most of the code has come from internally within my company. Though we have had a few uh, contributions outside. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't use Boa Constrictor with other REST API clients. Um, you could make your own abilities. You could make your own interactions. Let's say you didn't want to use REST Sharp and you wanted to go one level lower with like an HTTP client or something. Um, you could do that. And um, if, if you wanted to do that for yourself and your own project, cool. You can use kind of the example code that we have in Boa Constrictor to model that. Um, if you believe that your code would be valuable to other people, I'd more than welcome contributions back to the open source project. Okay. Are there any examples of usage screenplay pattern with robot framework? Oh my gosh, I have no idea. Um, that's a great question. I would presume most likely not because I haven't seen a, a, a popular screenplay pattern in Python yet, not to say it's not out there. Um, and with robot framework being a keyword driven framework uh, where they already provide a lot of the keywords and steps for you, um, I'm not sure how valuable that would be, though I, I guess within your Python steps, yeah, you could, you could still use it. But I, I haven't I haven't seen that myself. Sorry. Okay. Um, let's see. It looks like um, can Boa be used with Appium and Win App Driver? No reason why not. Um, for Appium, given that's mobile, you will probably want to make some of your own custom interactions and custom abilities for that. But there, there's nothing stopping you from doing that. If, if you can describe it, you can do it. <laughs> it's just interactions, right? That, and that, that's one of the things I want to kind of drill home if I can springboard onto a point here. Like Boa Constrictor and Screenplay Pattern are not purely meant to be replacements for page object model. It's, that's not necessarily the intent. Screenplay Pattern is meant to be a better way to handle interactions with automation. So any kind of interaction you have, whether that's with a mobile app using Appium, whether that's desktop using WinApp Driver, whether, I mean, it could be, you know, command line kind of stuff, right? Those are all interactions that we're doing in a black box sense. So um, absolutely, you can use Boa Constrictor to handle those kinds of things. Um, I would love someday for there to be a, um, an Appium namespace within Boa Constrictor where we provide out of the box 
interactions for mobile interactions with with Appian. I think it would be really cool if we could have like a you know a, a win app driver namespace that does the same kind of thing. Um, so can it do it out of the box today? No. Can it ultimately do it? Yes. Let's partner up. <laughs> Okay, well, speaking of the interactions, how do testers find the right interactions for what they want to do? You'd end up with dozens of different classes. Um, how do people find the right one? Oh, that's a, a great question. As your project grows, so too will your interactions grow. Um, but just for, um, just to give an example of, you know, how, how that would scale. At Precision Lender, currently we have, or our setup is, We've written all of our end-to-end -end tests for the Precision Lender application in C Sharp using SpecFlow and BOA Constrictor. And underneath BOA Constrictor, of course, being WebDriver and REST Sharp. We have about 1,600 unique SpecFlow scenarios. Um, we run them on four different environments, or I should say configurations, in four configurations in two different environments. Um, every night we're pushing anywhere from about 4,000 to 8,000 unique test instances, um, all automated going continuously as well as nightly. So on a daily basis, there could be anywhere from 4,000 to up to even 10,000, depending on how many deploys there were during the day. Um, so we have a lot of tests. We have big infrastructure. All of our interactions are in BOA Constrictor. We don't do anything else. It's all homogenous. And so you would think that with 1,600 tests, oh my gosh, I'm going to have like so many interactions, like hundreds to thousands of question and task classes that would be specific to the PL app, right? And the truth is actually not really. The majority of the interaction calls we make for automation are just the web driver or the rest sharp calls. Um, a lot of clicks, a lot of scrapes, you know, that kind of stuff. We probably have about somewhere between only 50 to 80, I would guess. I can't, I can't think off the top of my head an exact number, but like, you know, 50-ish, maybe a little bit more um, custom interactions for the PL application at that level of scale. And so what we do is just like you would organize anything, like you'd organize test cases. We have a hierarchy. We, do, we divide sensibly by different areas of the app. Um, so we really don't have a huge glut of unique interactions. Um, and a lot of our interactions are things like log into the app, um, uh, open a new opportunity. We do loans and stuff, um, you know, scrape like the whole header of something, those kinds of things. So it's, it's not as, as much of a burden as you might think. I hope that helps. Okay. Uh, what is your commitment to the BOA Constrictor open source project? For example, how quickly are bugs fixed and new features are implemented? Oh, I'm on that thing. <laughs> as soon as somebody <laughs> opens an issue or uh, asks a question or something, I try to answer like within a day. You know, thankfully we don't get that many because like I said, the project is still fairly small. Um, personally, I remain very, very committed to this. Um, I, I believe strongly in the value proposition of the screenplay pattern. I believe very strongly in the constrictor as a good C sharp implementation. Um, we use it for all of our um, end to end tests within Precision Lender. So, like, I'm I'm very much committed to it in that sense of if there's a problem, like, and I can't run the thousands of tests I need to, my team and I need to run, um, my team and I are on it, you know. And um, also, like, I mean, we just we just printed these cool stickers. So I would say that yeah, our team is fairly committed to loving our our project here. <laughs> So um, if you're afraid of like it going dormant or something, uh, for now, not on my watch. Got it. Okay. Yes. Then everyone, don't forget, be one of the 10 pe first 10 people to tweet about what they learned from this webinar. So that way you can get your very own BOA Constructor sticker. Um, our next question, how can we use screenplay or BOA Constructor with visual testing? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, so just like with we described with like Appium or um, WinApp Driver or any of the other kinds of things, um, you can make interactions out of anything. So if you have something like Apple Tools and you're doing visual testing, um, you've got that special library that you import into your code and you start making calls for the visual scans and stuff, 
um, you could add that to your interactions, right? Just in line with all the other kinds of things going. Um, you could even potentially make you know, kind of custom interactions to embed it even further, get it really hooked into that automatic logging. So that, yeah, I would say just put it in the interactions. <laughs> okay. How does the screenplay pattern work with the use of Gherkin and VDD related methods of writing tests? Does this change the way that features are composed? Ooh, phenomenal question. Um, for those who don't know, I love behavior-driven development. I, I write way too much about writing good Gherkin and best practices and all. Um, that's, that's, yeah, that's one of my things I like. Um, uh. So with, with um, wow, lost my train of thought there. With, with our, our precision lender tests, like I said, we use spec flow with um, Boa Constrictor. And spec flow is BDD for .NET. It's, it's kind of like the Cucumber variant written in C-sharp. And so, yeah, we we ha we write all of our test cases in Gherkin, given when then format. Um, we write full subject predicate phrases. We try to limit our steps to, you know, single digit scenario length, excuse me, strict given when then ordering, a range act assert following the pattern, atomic kinds of tests, some optimization with REST API calls, all the good stuff. And, when it comes down to our step definition methods that we write in C sharp, I would say, you know, almost all of our step definition methods are just making a few boa constrictor calls. You know, actor attempts to navigate here, actor attempts to click this, actor asks for the text of this field, um, actor asking for the text of that field should be whatever my title should be, you know, those kinds of calls. And it's really nice because, you know, you, you, you then have this multi-layer um, test automation architecture in which each layer um, handles its own concerns, right? The top Gherkin layer is handling the concern of what is the test case? What is the good procedure? What is the behavior specification, right? Independent of any code. And then the next layer down is the step definitions, the test support, where you have that glue where you're gluing the steps or the, the, the Gherkin plain language to you know your your first parts of C sharp code, and you you don't want your step definitions to be enormous. I've seen some that go off the page, and you're like, I can't follow this. Oh my gosh, it's a wall of text. But with Boa Constrictor, because the Boa Constrictor syntax is readable, understandable, and concise, um, you know most of our step definitions are like between one and four lines. <laughs> you know, just making Boa Constrictor calls, and then the next level be below the the actual step definitions would be the interactions themselves. So how do you interact with the app? And it goes from there. So it dovetails very, very nicely. Okay. Um, at what scale would you recommend screenplay versus an, another approach, um, PO, Selenium, API calls? Mm, cool, good question. Um, if you have a screenplay implementation readily available in, your, in the language that you're working, for example, if you're like me and you're in C-sharp and you got Boa Constrictor, I would say like, use that. <laughs> um, I wouldn't use, okay, me speaking personally, I would not use page object pattern anymore in C-sharp, full stop, because we have Boa Constrictor, right? I would NuGet install using Boa.constrictor in my C-sharp file and just go. Um, whether the project is big or small, because all that boilerplate code is already there, ready and battle hardened. Um, if I were in another language like Java or JavaScript, which has Selenium, or sorry, Serenity, um, the challenge with that is the screenplay pattern isn't really uh, a standalone thing in that. It's you either you either get screenplay with the full Serenity framework or nothing. So at that point, you have to make that call. Um, if you're in any other language, you know, like Python or Ruby, or let's say you were in Java or JavaScript and you didn't want to use Serenity, um, you'd have to weigh the benefit of, okay, how big is my test automation project going to grow, right? Does the, does the expected size of my test automation project justify me making my own screenplay implementation? Um, so I would say like, if, if your project is going to be a hundred test cases or left, oh, and there is no screenplay, implementation and you really don't want to do screenplay implementation, then you're probably okay with page objects. That's a fairly small project. If you're getting above that, then you might want to consider doing your own screenplay implementation. 
um, because it just it just pays dividends. It's um, dramatic. It, we have found it has dramatically reduced the redundancy in our code, um, the readability of our code, um, the flexibility. The fact that you can use these interactions for like any web element. It's like, oh, this is really cool. Um, that would be kind of my my breaking point if I were thrown to another project in another language. Okay. How to create? How do you create screenplay pattern project with TypeScript and ca Test Cafe? I have no idea. Let me think. Okay. Okay. I might have an idea. So I'm I'm not at heart a JavaScript person or a TypeScript person. I've I've dabbled with it. Yeah, it's cool. I used to do JavaScript like way way back in the day, like when I was an intern at IBM in the mid thousands. Oh man, that's old. For all the nice modern things. <laughs> um, yeah, it's like gosh, now I feel old, but I'm not that old. This is not good. Anyway, so TypeScript and Test Cafe. I mean, it if if you wanted to to do that and you chose that you did not want to use Serenity, that you wanted to kind of blaze your own trails. What I would recommend is go to the Boa Constrictor repository or go to the Serenity BDD repository and look at the the implementation we have of the screenplay pattern. Um, now, the implementations between Boa Constrictor and Serenity are going to be a little bit different. Um, I like to think, in my own beliefs, that Boa Constrictor is a bit simpler, but that that probably has bias and all that kind of stuff too. But um, read the documentation, learn about how the screenplay pattern is supposed to work, see how we've set up our interfaces, see how we set up the pattern. I make I, I might make it sound a little scarier than I what, than it actually is when I say there's some boilerplate code. I mean, really, the pattern is about five interfaces. It's I actor, I ability, I I interaction, I task, I question, I guess also an I condition, right? And each of those interfaces, if you remove comments, is no more than 20 lines each. So it's really not that much boilerplate code. You can look at it, understand it, and then um, implement it yourself in TypeScript. Uh, that would be what I would the, the way I would suggest to go. Okay. Uh, let's see. Can we use other assertion libraries with Boa Constrictor in addition to the build built-in assertions? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's the beauty of separating concerns. Um, when, when it comes to frameworks for anything, whether that's test frameworks or web frameworks or whatever kind of framework you want, um, you've got you've got two paths. You can have the framework that does everything all in one. It tries to to handle all the problems, solve all the things. Or you can have a, a framework that is narrow, or a tool, I should say, that is narrowly focusing on, you know, one type of concern and trying to do that really, really, really well. Boa Constrictor is the latter case. Boa Constrictor is trying to do the one thing really, really well, and that thing is handling interactions. That is the concern that it's, it's trying to focus on. Boa Constrictor does not make judgments or make have requirements or enforcements on any kind of assertions that, that you want to have. Um, that is left up to you as the user of Boa Constrictor. So um, in, in our PL project, Precision Lender, sorry, I keep saying PL. In, in the project where I work, we use Fluent assertions because we like how it dovetails in nicely with the Fluent syntax. But if you've got your own assertion library that you want to use, there's absolutely nothing to stop you. It's, it's going to be totally compatible. Okay, great. Uh, let's see, we've got just a few more questions here. Um, is there any sample template of screenplay implementation available on GitHub? Yes, yes. So if you go to the Boa Constrictor repository, um, you, you might want to Google like Boa Constrictor screenplay so you don't end up with, with a bunch of pictures of snakes. <laughs> um, but if you go there, we have uh, a full tutorial that will take you through setting up a .NET project in Visual Studio, um, in importing the uh, Boa Constrictor package, walking through writing tests for web UI, and then also a two-part one on REST API, basic and advanced. So that will show you the example code of like, here's how you make the project. Um, if you don't want to take the tutorial and you just want to look at code, um, there's also in that same repository, a folder called boa.constrictor.example. It's essentially the, the code for the tutorial, but already complete. So you can go in there and you can see how we've structured a few basic tests using Web UI and REST API interactions. And you can even run it yourself. Um, there's instructions for how to get up and go with that. Unfortunately, at this time, I don't have like a, a large scale solution that I can 
publicly point to and say, here's here's how we do the code. Um, my my code for my company is proprietary right now. I wish I could show it um, because that that could really show how it scales up very very nicely for handling hundreds to thousands of tests. Okay. Uh, for web tables, do you have interactions like in logistics, custom controls, or difficult interactions? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, let me think. Um, hold on one moment. Uh, shoot, I'm looking for the, the question. Uh, Patrice, could you please repeat the question? There was a lot in there. Uh, yeah, sure, no problem. It says, for web tables, do you have interactions? Like oh, okay. in logistics custom controls, there, it looks like they're difficult interactions. Uh, we don't have any anything, or we don't have any interactions out of the box for that kind of thing with Selenium WebDriver. Okay. Sorry. Does the library have reporting options? Actually, yes. Uh, this is something kind of interesting that we added. Um, Boa Constrictor has what it calls a test log report. It's not very pretty, but what, what it will do is it will, um, Boa Constrictor captures messages for all the interactions. So every time you say actor dot attempts to, actor dot asks for, all of that stuff is being logged using a logger behind the scenes. So you never have to explicitly make logs. You, you can make log messages explicitly, but you don't have to. Um, all that stuff is captured so that if the test fails later, you can go back and trace through that log. So we that by, if you give it a console logger, it'll print to the console output. Um, but we also will gather that up in a, a an HTML report format that you can you can customize. What the nice thing with that is not only will it automatically capture logs, but if you take any web screenshots or if you make any REST API calls, it will capture the, the screenshots and the request um, and re response dumps as JSON, and it will link it from that report file. So it's it's kind of a nice way to have all of those artifacts kind of linked in one place. Um, I Unfortunately, I don't have like a, a public example of using that, but the code is in the Boa Constrictor repository. And if you want to use it and you're not exactly sure, open up a GitHub image and then I'll answer there and provide more, <laughs> more code. Okay. Uh, the level of understanding patterns in code looks complicated for a QA. When would you consider someone ready or able to properly use screenplay pattern, not end up in sketchy code? Or what would be the steps levels to get there? Ah, great question. Um, and this is probably targeting folks who are maybe new to automation, maybe even new to programming, or just new to, um, I mean, it could be new to the screenplay pattern as well. I would say, I mean, first and foremost, uh, when it comes to test automation, um, you have to have good grasps on both testing <laughs> and on programming, right? So because Bo can, or the, because screenplay pattern is inherently an object-oriented design pattern, not only will someone need programming skills, but they will need basic object-oriented programming skills. Um, so that way they, they know what a class is, what a method is, what inheritance is, those kinds of things. Um, if they've got that, then there's, I would say there's really nothing stopping them from, from um, picking up Boa Constrictor or picking up Screenplay Pattern. As I said before, it, try not to overcomplicate Screenplay. Um, I know, like I said, Screenplay is not new. Uh, in our industry, one of the, the major hesitations there's been against Screenplay over the past decade is because it's seemed more complicated than it has to be. And so that's why I, I, I repeat, actors use abilities to perform interactions. That's what screenplay is. It's just dependency injection behind the scenes. It, if you can conceptually understand actors, abilities, and interactions, and how those um, are separate concerns, then you can come to the code and see how they just kind of fit together like Lego bricks. Um, and so, yeah, <laughs> shouldn't be any anything much to worry about. Follow the examples we have online, read the doc site, take the tutorial. Um, hopefully things should fall in place. And again, if they don't, you can always tweet me or you can open a bulk constrictor issue. Okay. Um, let's see. 
someone would like to analyze an example, a login page test or something like that, where can they find um, a sample? Okay, uh, I don't have a sample of like login, um, but as I said before, we do have the, the example project in the repo. It does a basic web search, it does a REST API search um, or REST API request. So that, hopefully that's enough to get started. Um, and again, if people, if people need help with that, like, you know, what I would say is try something on your own first, um, see if it doesn't work. If you get stuck, if you're not sure, then reach out to me or open a, a project or a, a GitHub issue and say like, hey, I tried this. Does this look right? I'm stuck here. My team and I'll be more than happy to come alongside and help. Okay, fantastic. All right, so let's see. Um, looks like that's going to be all the time that we have today for our questions. And I want to thank everyone for joining us for this live session. And of course, to thank our speaker, Andrew Knight. Before I let Andrew go, I actually would love to see you all at our very next event, which is going to be Front End Test Fest. It is a one day virtual track for um, software engineers to learn the latest and greatest from those in the industry on front end testing strategies. I will share a link in the chat for everyone so that you can take a look and visit that. Let's see, it's going to be right in there right now. And I'm having a difficult time switching over to make myself presenter. I think, Andy, I may, I may need you to switch me back over to sure, presenter. Sure. So I can share my screen here. Uh, one moment. Okay. Uh, make presenter. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Boom. boom. Okay, awesome. Perfect. Yes. Sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, yes. Um, take a look at our front end test fest. This is a partnership between Apple Tools and Cypress. So really exciting event we have coming up June 8th. Um, hope to see you all at that event. And as a reminder, I will send out a link to the recorded the recording of this session by the end of the day tomorrow. So you can definitely catch more of those screenshots where Andrew was giving out some really fantastic resource information for you to learn um, and dig in a little bit further about screenplay. So, Andrew, I'm going to pass it back over to you. Thank you again so very, very much um, for your session and answering all of these really great questions. Oh, well, thanks for inviting me. It was a fun time. <laughs> all right. Fantastic. Thank you, everyone. Hope to see you at our next event. Bye.